Hey everybody, I'm Josh. I wanted to do a, a quicker video and uh, talk about one of the comments I got. And it really made me think. Uh, uh, they were talking about how I wish I had a friend like you because nobody else around me seems to talk about any of the deeper stuff in life and any of the deeper meanings in life. And I explained to them that I would sometimes would be sitting down, you know, when I was when I was younger and we'd be sitting down and we'd, we'd get some deeper conversations going. Absolutely. But I haven't had that experience where I've had these friends that I were was just talking about these deeper spiritual things in life. And the reason was, was because I was always kind of not ashamed, but just didn't want to bring that up because I, I didn't think anybody else would want to talk about it. I really didn't. And when I had my spiritual awakening or my connection to God, I kind of, I kind of uh, hid it from most people for a little, a little over a year, probably. I was like, this is something personal for me and I don't want to sound like a lunatic talking to everybody about how a, a deer came out of the woods and I could tell it was a message from God. And people are like, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> they know how wild and insane I've, I've been in my life and probably just me joking around or I really spent most of my life just, just trying to make people laugh. So they probably just don't take anything I really have to say seriously and just expect to get, you know, just more laughs out of me. And I love that. I love comedy. I love making people laugh still. But the reason I do this is for that deeper connection. And what you have to understand is, though I hit it from everyone, from most people, it started to change the relationships I had because... I had that inner peace. And then I was finally like, you know what? I'm just going to break down and do a do a YouTube channel and keep writing my book. And I, I found that even before that, that I would meet people like at the dog park or in line at the grocery store. And somehow, some way, this spiritual experience their spiritual experiences and mine just came up out of nowhere that has literally never happened to me before it's another thing that i marked down to divine intervention or whatever you want to call it everyone not everyone a lot of people i met just started talking about their connection with God, their connection with how they, they got through their struggles and through spirituality and through religion and all these things. And it was just like I was supposed to spread this message. And that's kind of what led me to do these videos. Because I think people are, if not afraid and kind of hesitant to talk about this stuff, because they don't, they don't want to seem like a lunatic. In your life, you kind of look at everyone around you. And, and I apologize for the wind today and, and for the, uh, if it's messing up the sound and everything. You don't want to feel like a lunatic, first of all. People just have this normalcy bias. So you just... Everything in life, I mentioned in the video I just recorded, everything in life you're doing is because you saw someone else doing. There's very few things that you can ever do that will be completely unique to you, yet you have a completely unique life. Your journey, though many people seem to take the same one from birth till death, it's not about the destination. It's not about even where you're going on your journey. It's about what you experience on that journey, what you take away from it. 
the choices that you make and the lessons that you learn from your failures, from your successes, from everything. It's about the experience. And people do want to talk about this. And they're, once you start getting into it and once you start going through the self-discovery and, and hopefully it, at some point you can find a connection to God and you'll actually understand God's messages to you. You take that experience and you just figure out what you're supposed to do in life. God will send you specific messages because you are unique. And God has a unique message for you. So you take those signals. If, if a bird lands on a tree in front of, in front of you, like say, say a cardinal, that's going to mean something different to you than it does to someone else. Someone else might not even notice or say, oh, there's a cardinal. Wow. You might say, oh, wow, it's like, an, you know, it's like the cardinal connected with me like an angel was visiting me. You, who knows? I don't know what it means to you. Only God knows that, and that's why he sends you these messages. You're unique. You have meaning. You have purpose in life. And it's not easy to find it, and it's definitely, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it. I guarantee you it's worth it. And when you find, when you get at least closer to that meaning, and you start discovering more of your spirituality, these people <clears throat> will come out of nowhere, and you'll start meeting these random strangers, and it might just be a little one-time chat. Or you might just spark up a friendship that lasts the rest of your life. Nobody knows. I, <clears throat> I went back to the place. I, I often go back there. The place where God visited me. I've told the story too many times, so I'm not going to do it this time. But where the uh, white-tailed doe came out of the woods and walked al along with me on the path. And, and God's, God just awakened me that day. I go back there all the time, and almost every time I go, I meet some random hiker who every single one of them just, we just immediately started going from, oh, hey, how are you? And then like, this is just beautiful around here. And, and then we start talking about our spiritual experiences, just, just random spiritual experiences. And, and it is... You know, one guy said that he he was out there taking photographs and he was walking along the same shore exactly where I met that deer. And he was like, I never knew. You know, I always wanted to go travel and since I didn't have the money to travel and, and I love photography and I didn't have a chance to go anywhere. But then I just realized, hey, maybe I'll check out some of the places around here. He'd lived in the Raleigh area most of his life. He said he finally got out to this uh, to this wilderness out where we were, the lake, he said he never understood how beautiful it was out there. And then he just found himself and he just, every day it seems to call him that he just has to go out there and just, just get, and just relax and take pictures and do what he, what he loves to do. And I meet so many people like this who just have these spiritual awakening and or these spiritual experiences and just want to talk about it so bad but you can once you start getting into it and once you start getting more experienced it's like it's magnets drawn together or it's like a magnet drawn to to steel or whatever <laughs> the magnets push apart I understand that but you will draw people into your sphere and your life that are meant to be there. And they, because you've been seeking God and they've been seeking at least their own spirituality too, then you'll connect with them and they'll help you on your path and you'll help them. They might be way farther than you on your path and they might give you some sort of direction 
or you might be farther than them and give them some kind of direction. We're all in this together. We're all in here to help each other, to be here for each other. Now, I just want you to know that you can find these people in your life. And if you don't, then it's just don't force it. Maybe, maybe try going to a Bible study or, or something. Maybe try a, and if you, if you can't stand Christianity for some reason, go to a Buddhist temple or go where, go, go seek it out. Go seek these people out who might be able to help you, but just be, if you go to a place like a church or, or, you know, any kind of religious shrine, just make sure that you understand that the people that are in these places might have great insight for you, but don't let that, don't feel like you have to rely on them to find God because they can just point you in the right direction, but your spiritual path is your own. You will find it. If you're called to Christianity, for example, then you're going to go to Christianity. If you're, if you're smart, you will seek it out. If that's what's, if that's what seems to be calling you the most, and that's what's always called me the most, you will seek it out. Because I, I tried, I, I didn't think Christianity had anything to offer me. Uh, well, I, I did. I, I, I saw Jesus when I was young. Or I felt Jesus' presence. And I, I really just didn't get anything out of church for so long that I was like, there's not any kind of higher meaning there. I've already gotten what I'm going to get out of there. And so I just gave up on any kind of Christianity religion in my life. I mean, I would go through the motions and go to church sometimes on Christmas or, or whatever. But I really didn't, my heart wasn't in it. Then when I, when God finally did come to me after I'd suffered for so long, then I started just going through YouTube videos, going through reading texts. And, and then I started coming, I'd always come back to the Bible. And I was like, well, there must be a reason why I'm, I'm still drawn back to the Bible. And, and I realized that every single one of the philosophies, I guess, that I, I kind of borrowed from, you know, the different religions and the different spiritualities, they all were already existing in the Bible in one way or another. I just almost dropped my phone. In one way or another, they already all existed in Christianity. But the thing about Christianity in, in any religion is you can interpret it in almost any way that you want to. But God was showing me my specific path, so I kind of made my own understanding of Christianity, and I, and I realized that the great thing about Christianity is the salvation and the redemption and, the, and just the love for one another. And really, I, I don't think that any other... I, I guess some of the other religions come close to something like that, maybe. But it's just a shell of what true Christianity is. I mean, if you look at the more spiritual, spiritual, even even mystical elements of, of Christianity, it is it is so revolutionary. That's why it's been the dominating religion for thousands of years. And I'm not saying that you should go, you should go and study Christianity because maybe, maybe Christianity's pushed you away. But I'm saying that I found my peace there. Even though I didn't, I didn't think that I wanted to, or I didn't think it was there. I found my peace back there. It was like home for me. I was like, I finally realize. Uh, I've, I've said before, 
Okay, so knowledge is reading the Bible and being able to uh, read the words and memorize the words sometimes. Memorize a Bible verse. Wisdom is understanding the true meaning behind the words. I finally had wisdom in my life for the first time ever. Because I was not, I was not smart and I was not wise for sure. I'm still not smart, but at least I'm a little bit wiser. I found wisdom in the Bible like I never understood was there. I just thought it was just some old style writing. Thou shalt not smoke pot or, you know, you know what? I, I know it doesn't say that. I just thought it was just old styly stuff preaching to us, you know, telling us what we should and shouldn't do and blah, blah, blah. It's so much more than that. It really is. But I think that you have to go through suffering before you understand the true meaning behind Christianity. The true meaning of, of Christ's suffering for us and Christ's sacrifice. And I'll tell you what right now. Like, even if uh, you could some, we could somehow build a time machine and go back and find, oh, Christianity is just all made up. Even if we could prove that, which there's a lot of proof that, that it was absolutely true the way it happened for the New Testament. Even if we could prove that, it would still be one of the greatest, greatest spiritualities there is. The greatest parables, the greatest stories ever told. It is the greatest story ever told. And that is, in my mind, that is, is completely what I've given my life to. And I do it in the way that God shows me, not how a church shows me, because I still, even though I'll go to churches, I still do not find the find what I want there. I find what I want from talking straight to God and having a personal relationship with Him having a personal relationship with Jesus. And you might have something completely different. And don't let anybody tell you that that's wrong. And don't let anybody tell you that, don't let anybody convince you that Christianity is bad either. Because the people that make Christianity bad are just people. People corrupt everything because they open their hearts to corruption. They don't understand what they're doing half the time. They're all about power. They're all about control. Don't listen to any of it. Don't trust in man. Don't even trust in your own family who you love. Trust in God. And through God, you can trust in everything. I know that I'm not going to put my trust in man. Because I know that when I do, they will let me down. All the time, if you put your trust in someone, there's that very real possibility and the very good chance they're going to let you down. But when you trust in God, you understand no matter the outcome, no matter if they do try to screw you over or whatever, God will, God wants it to be that way. He's doing it for a reason. Okay, I know I've gone on a long time again, but hey, God bless and we'll talk soon.